this length of the instrument if the age of the patient is less than 5 years then you have to use 20 cm length instrument for pediatric surgeon between 5 to 14 you will use 28 cm instrument and from 14 to the adult you will use 36 cm instrument the length of the instrument now why it is important that appropriate size of the instrument should be there because half of the instrument should be inside the abdomen and half of the instrument should be outside the abdomen otherwise it will not behave like type 1 liver it will become type 2 or type 3 liver type 1 liver is balance balance which is used by the shopkeeper to weigh the things in balance you might have seen the fulcrum is in the middle and load arm and the force arms are equal in length then your balance is the better exactly same way half of the length of the instrument should be in if you for a small pediatric age group if you use the adult instrument you cannot perform surgery because maximum length of the instrument will be out and will start behaving like type 2 liver so 20 cm, 28 cm and 36 cm instruments are there. One extraordinary length of the instrument is there that is 45 cm that is used for morbid obesity. Only for morbid obesity like gastric bending, sleeve gastrectomy if you want to do you can use 45 cm instrument. Now the first instrument which you should have in your hand is a traumatic graspers. These are the atraumatic graspers. Atraumatic graspers has the property that they have the low serration and fenestration. Low serration means if you will see there on the jaw there is serration. So this serration is very less. And fenestration means there will be opening on either side. This is known as fenestration. So what is the advantage that if you will hold the tissue tissue can breathe through this fenestration like I am holding my finger with this atraumatic grasper and it will do only elastic deformation of the tissue like when I will open it the my finger tissue is disfigured but if I will do like that it is again regained <coughs> this is elastic deformation whenever you enter inside the abdominal cavity First, you should always try to hold the atraumatic grasper to do the initial diagnostic laparoscopy. To strip the bowel away or if you want to hold the tube or you want to move, walk over to the bowel, atraumatic grasper is must. Initial 5 minute time we should spend to do the initial assessment of the anatomy. Now, once you have decided to start your surgery, then you may need the semi-traumatic graspers. This semi-traumatic graspers has a deep serration. So, if you will hold it, the advantage it will not slip. <coughs> With the atraumatic, it is always there that it will slip. You cannot hold the fundus of the gallbladder. If you will hold it, it will drop. But semi-traumatic, it will not drop. It can give you the better traction, but it will do the plastic deformation of the tissue. And that plastic deformation is not good if you are doing for diagnostic purposes. If you will use the semi-traumatic to hold the appendix, that means you should do the appendicectomy now. Otherwise, patient will develop appendicitis. So, it is just used for the traction purposes. Another group of the grasper is traumatic one. This is traumatic. Traumatic is of many types. This is 3 to 2 traumatic. Here if you see, there are 3 tooth on the lower jaw and 2 tooth on the upper jaw. So this one 
is just the replica of our alien forceps. So I cannot dare to put my finger here because it will bite. Essentially, it will bite. It should only be used for the adipotent tissue, fibrous tissue. Like if you want to do the endometrioma, in those situations, sometimes for dermal cyst, sometimes acute cholecystitis, adipotent gallbladder, a lot of fibrosis. In those situations, you will use traumatic one. Or you want to hold the myoma, <coughs> or you want to hold the any tissue which may not get the proper grip in the semi-traumatic or a-traumatic. There is one more type of grasper. That is three is to this was three is to two. This is one is to one. This one is to one is used for the only the tissue which is very hard. Like sometimes it is used for the myoma to just before a morselation to hold. One is to one, one to this is just like a tenaculum. One to three this side, another jaw is that side. It is very sharp. Problem with the three is to two is. That if you use it to hold the morselator, then its jaw will remain open. And when the blade of the morselator may touch the open jaw, and the blade will break. One is to one, always it will bite. Just like tenaculum, when you are holding the cervix, it is biting there. So the grip is strong, and the jaw will not remain open because it will pierce into the tissue. And the blade of the morselator will not break. It can do the morselation better. So this is one is to one traumatic. This is three is to two traumatic graspers. So this way there are three group of the graspers there. Now I will tell you that all the instrument here which you are seeing right now, those are the reusable instrument. All the reusable instruments is made up of three components. One is inside. This is sheath and this is handle, and if they are dismantleable, it should open. How to open? You will move this cap, then open the handle, and then take the insert out. So there are three pieces there. This is known as sheath. The sheath has the insulation. This is known as insert. <clears throat> Only difference is in insert. There are different type of insert. Insert may be grasper, insert may be scissors, insert may be Maryland. And or if one insert is broken, you can ask the company new insert. This insert has to go to the sheath. You see the sheath, and now insert is inside. And there is one ball, and in the handle there is one socket. So this ball will go to the socket, and then you will close it. Check the cap, and you can fix it. This is assembling and disassembling. Every time, after every surgery, every instrument has to disassemble and assemble. You can try yourself. One is inside, other is seat and third is handle. Inside, seat and handle. This is inside. This is seat, and this is handle. And you have to first open the cap. No, when you are opening the cap, hold the hold this rotating rotating mechanism. Yes, this you should hold. Otherwise, everything will move. Don't allow this to move. And then inside, open the inside. And here it is out. It is very simple. Again, you will put the insert into the seat, and then screw it. Close it. Close the inside, and then the, on the back you will see one ball. And once you will open the handle, there is a socket there. This ball should go to this socket, and it is attached now. After that, you will take the cap, you put it here, and it is done. You have to check here. This is good, but I will tell you one thing. Remember, open the open the handle. Yes. Then only the socket is out. Can you see that? 
and try to put this ball into that socket. Try to, no, no, not like that, from the top. Sometimes it may be a little tight. Yes. I will again show you. It will go. It will go. And then you will attach it. So every time after surgery it has to be dismantled, it has to be opened and needs to be cleaned with the mild detergent body shampoo. You can use any body shampoo and you can clean it and again assemble it and then you will put in the side axle or paraphaldehyde or by guanides, you will put it after that. You put everything in the sheet also? Sheet also together. Generally, the company is uh, recommending that you should put it into the side X in the dismantal state. All the three apart. But there is one problem in that. Problem is sometimes some instruments are of one company, another of another company. Then inside of one and the sheath of another will not fit together. So that will be a little risky. Your instrument may get loose because joints may not, some will be tight, some will be loose. So ideally, after cleaning, you should assemble it and then put into the siding. So this way, every instrument has these three parts of every company. All the companies, now they are making in the three piece. Sheath is separate, handle is separate, inside is separate. Now how to hold the instrument? Thumb should go in this back hole. The ring finger should be in the front one. The middle finger should be here. And index finger is for rotating. And little finger is for ratchet. This is ratchet. Purpose of ratchet is to lock. Suppose you are holding, you can lock it. And now locking, it is locked. So, if you want to unlock, you will do like that. In some of the instruments, there is no ratchet. But suppose if you want the ratchet to be there, you can change the handle of this one to the another one. If you need it, suppose. Otherwise, it's okay. Only difference is if there is no ratchet, your assistant has to keep it pressed. If it is ratchet it is there, you can lock it and you can leave it also. It will be holding there. So, another important point, whenever you want to rotate the jaw, then don't rotate it while the jaw of the instrument is closed. It should be open and then rotate it. If it is closed and then you will try to rotate, it will be hard, you can see that. It is hard, it will not rotate. If you close it tightly and try to rotate, it will be hard. If you open it, it will be very loose. Another, in the closed state, if you will try to rotate it, your instrument will get a spoil. Because there is one washer there, it will break. So it is important whenever you are rotating the jaw, keep the handle open and then you rotate it. And then again you hold, suppose I have to, I have to rotate it, then don't rotate the tissue while it is holding the tissue. You should again open it, then turn, turn the direction and then again catch it. Yes, one is to one generally used for mercenators. Mercenators because three to two cannot make a bite sufficient enough to enter into the tissue because surface area is more. So it will remain open and then it creates problems. Just I can show you. Because I put mercenator layer, mechanical mercenator layer. I will show. So this. Yes. Three to two. Otherwise, otherwise it will break. Here, here the advantage is three to two has the advantage. 
that it, it gets more surface area so it can hold the more sur tissue so once you will pull it will not break but the problem is this is this is one is to one suppose this is a tissue i want to morselate here is the tissue if i will take one is to one it is biting it can you see that yes and then i can morselate it like that this is morselation here this is mechanical morselator and you can morselate it and then you can take the tissue out but if you will use three is to two this is three is to two then in the three is to two sometimes what happens that tissue cannot it, it cannot bite the tissue like and it is open now it cannot enter inside and the open jaw like this open jaw it it will it will break the blade of the morselator so that's why one is to one is used generally for morselation and three to two for grasping the tough tissue fibrous tissue so every instrument has these three parts and it is important there are two type of grip one is in grip other is over grip this is in grip means thumb should be in the back hole ring finger in the front hole middle finger should be here and index finger is for rotation this is in grip but sometime you have to work as a assistant and in those situation your job is just to hold the tissue and if you keep for one hour this in grip then you will get numbness of the thumb here so in those situation you hold it and then get over grip and that way you can keep both pressed you don't need to put your thumb inside and that will be comfortable position even for long time in those situation thumb should not go inside but uh, on the top if you will hold you cannot do your dissection surgeon should always get the in grip surgeon cannot hold from the top because you have to open the jaw you dissect it fine cutting fine dissection is required now the next instrument i would like to show you is the maryland this is maryland actually maryland is the name given for one of the university in the united states of america that is maryland university but basically it is a dissector and this is a replica of our artery forceps which we use in the open surgery now this maryland has a three function one is a stripping other is window formation and third is hemostasis when in laparoscopy a lot of time we have to do a stripping a stripping is very important whatever we do we never want to cut sharp we never want to do the sharp dissection we want to do the blunt dissection more like if you are doing cholecystectomy first you will hold the peritoneum of the cystic pedicle and you will strip it exactly same way if you want to do the nephrectomy you will cut it the white line of tart and you will mobilize the bowel you will strip it down if you are doing hysterectomy you are cutting the uv fold and stripping the peritoneum up to separate the blood bladder in those situation it is very good instrument because it can hold the peritoneum any other instrument is difficult this is replica of our artery forceps just like you can see it is holding the hair also it can hold one hair also so you will hold it and this is a stripping a stripping is in the line of the tissue you will strip and stripping will be done by this only sometime you can use a peanut also to separate the blunt dissection <clears throat> another function of this is window formation in laparoscopy whenever we want to dissect any organ we want to make a window first like suppose renal artery and renal vein you have to make a window between vein and artery if you want to take you try in artery you have to make a window all around the artery in the cystic pedicle between cystic duct and cystic artery so how we are making a window with the maryland only Jasper will never be used to make a window. Maryland tip is pointed. So first you will put over and there will be indentation. This is indentation. You will see the tip. 
Suppose you will go all around and then you will see the indentation. If you are seeing the indentation, that means this is a correct plane to make a window. Like splenic artery and vein in between. And this is this is indentation. And once the indentation is visible, then open the jaw and window is formed. If you cannot see the indentation means depression by the tip of the belly line, that means you are not having a correct plane. And that means more stripping of the peritoneum is required. And once you see the indentation, like this is indentation, then open it and a window is formed. One a small precaution should be taken that it should not any time for window formation, the jaw of the very land should not open at right angle to the tissue plane. It should be parallel to the vessel. This is simple principle even in open surgery. If you will open at right angle, it can bite the vessel behind and it can puncture the tissue. Especially in laparoscopy, we don't have proper articulation. Our instruments are rigid and straight. So this tip of the jaw of the very land should must open in the line of the vessel so that it will be properly good window will be formed at least 1.8 mm you need the jaw of the open jaw of the Maryland this gap is 2.2 cm that is 22 mm so when you are making a window at least the entire jaw of the Maryland should open that means you can apply the three clips there and then you can cut. So this is used as a measurement also. Once you have a window, try to open it fully. If you can open it fully, that means your dissection is complete to get the three clips accommodated there. Suppose window is formed but I can open that much only, only half of the jaw. That means little more dissection is required. So this way, this is the second function, that is a window for Third is hemostasis. Whenever you have any active bleeding, this is the only instrument which will help you. For active bleeder, grasp it doesn't work. Suppose this is you try and artery started bleeding. Now only thing, you can go with the Maryland and you can catch the neck of the bleeder. You can coagulate it. Either bipolar Marylands are also there. This is the monopolar Maryland, but bipolar Marylands are also there that is known as Roby dissector and it is very useful instrument in the total laparoscopic dissectomy. Sometimes suppose unfortunately after cutting bleeding started then monopolar is risky, monopolar has a lot of drawback that is remote injury is there, capacitive coupling, direct coupling, insulation failure. These are the drawbacks that I will discuss in detail during the dissection techniques. So, in those situations, bipolar Maryland is used. Maryland is just like a hemostat which is using open surgery. Grasper you should never use. Grasper has another problem. If you suppose anyhow, this bleeder you will hold with the grasper, suppose then there will be more, more remote injury because more the diameter of the tip of the instrument then the more remote injury will be there. Less heat will be produced here, more heat will be produced somewhere else. So this we have to keep in mind that this is our hemostest. Whenever bleeding starts, active bleeding, you should ask for Maryland. Now the next, there are few at right angle Marylands also. This is at right angle Maryland. This is useful for the nephrectomy. Sometimes when you are using transabdominal nephrectomy and then you are dissecting the renal artery, then behind you have the lumbar vessels that may confuse <coughs> one of the branch visible through the abdominal root. In those situations, right angle Mary lines are very good because artery is touching the abdominal wall. This right angle you can go and you can open to see the tip better. Exactly same way sometime during hysterectomy. If you are to escalatinize the uterine artery, in those situations right angle will do better because the tip is at right angle bend so it can be visualized by your telescope with a better angle. Although it is not a must having instrument, if you don't have this also, it works. It is not necessary to buy. Even the curve Maryland will do. 
Now the next instrument which I am going to demonstrate you is a scissors. There are four types of scissors. One is curved scissor, other is a straight scissor, third is micro scissor and fourth is hook scissor. These are the four types of scissors are there. And all the scissors are important. Now, <coughs> before explaining scissors, this is the bipolar Maryland. This is known as Robbie Dissector. This is very beautiful, very good instrument. And it is necessary for the gynecologist, especially when you are doing the hysterectomy. Here, you have the two poles and the joint is made up of plastic. So it will not be short circuited. And here also you have the two poles and you can attach, it is bipolar. And it will give you all the function of the dissector as well as bipolar coagulation. So near the uterine artery you cannot use the monopolar because ureter has high concentration of normal saline. And if you use monopolar, all the current will jump to the ureter and there may be injury. At that time nothing will happen because little fibrosis, after a few weeks patient will develop hydronephrosis. So bipolar is essential for that. And this is very good, that is known as a Robbie dissector. This is bipolar Maryland. Now we were talking about the seizures. There are four types of seizures. First we should learn how seizures work. <coughs> seizures are basically type 1 liver. They cut by liver action. The joint is the fulcrum. Open, open, so you can see the Joint is the fulcrum. <coughs> there is one load arm, one force arm. And when you are pressing it, our movement is transferred to the jaw and there is a shearing action. Both the jaws are crossing each other and due to that shearing action, anything comes in between will cut. This is shearing action here. And this is, this is fulcrum and this is liver. Now, any seizure to work, contact angle should be 15 degree. Like suppose this is a tissue, I want to cut. And when I am holding and then it is cutting here. But if I will make it that much thicker, it will not cut because your contact angle is more. If I want to cut this, it will not cut. Suppose, let us take one example that this is a wood, this is table, and this table is a solid table from the floor to, up to here. This is a wood. And suppose my hand is seizure. If I will go to cut, this angle is 90 degree. Then it will not cut. It will push. If I want to cut, I have to make a seizure. In that seizure, the jaw should be of the size of this room. Just and then it will cut because contact angle will become 15 degree. This is known as engagement. The seizure works in four stages. First is engagement. Second is the elastic deformation. Third is plastic deformation and fourth is fracture and dislocation. So for engagement it is must that the contact angle should be 15 degree. That's why if you see in the garden, garden scissors, in hook scissors, you don't have to bother about engagement. Suppose this is a structure. I want to cut it. And this is a curved scissor. I cannot cut. It is not engaging. It is slipping out. Exactly the same way suppose you have a proline. You want to cut the ligament, you want to cut the mess. In those situations, the simple scissors will not work. The problem is in laparoscopy, the jaws of the scissors are small. So engagement angle will not get 15 degree. For that, hook scissors is there. Hook scissors, now you can engage it here. I am engaging. And now, there is only two fate. Either this scissors will cut, break, or this structure will cut. Hook seizure is always used wherever you have problem of engagement, like you want to cut sutures, you want to trim the mess, you want to trim the ligament, 
In those situations, hook scissors is used. Hook scissors are the only scissors which cut distal to proximal. All the other scissors are cutting proximal to distal. What is the advantage of that? Suppose you have to do cholangiogram. You are a surgeon and you want to do the cholangiogram of the cystic duct. Now, in cholangiogram you have to cut half of the lumen of the cystic duct. In those situations, this is hook scissor, you will go and you will catch only half here and then cut. It is done, only half is cut. Half is left because this scissor is cutting distal to proximal. At first it is engaging and then it is cutting. Just like the beak of a parrot. It is like a hook. So the big guava, big fruit also, they can cut. Because first they are hooking and then cutting distal to proximal. Exactly same way hook scissors work. Exactly same way, suppose you have to do the recanalization surgery, tubal recanalization. And suppose there was, this is the follow-up ring applied. You want to cut, just you go and cut it like this, it is done. Again, cut this side. Follow-up ring is out. And you have very sharp, very sharp cut end. So that suturing will be fantastic. There will be no hesitation. There is no serrated margins. There is no hesitated cut. If you cut by the estates or curved scissors, you will not get a sharp cut margin. And there will be more bleeding. Because you will damage a little bit mesosalpings also. But here I can I can just catch the tube and I can decide and then I can cut. And it will it will cut in one go. It will cut in one go like this, trimmed. And there is no any fear of disengaging. <laughs> so in those situations, wherever you have problem of the engagement, you want to cut distal to proximal and you want to cut the controlled cutting depth, like only half you want to cut. Sometimes you are doing fimbrioplasty and fimbrial end of the tube is closed, you want to open, hook scissor is good. Suppose sometimes you want to take the ureter, hook scissor is good. Pyloplasty, hook scissor is good. Because just you want to cut the pelvis, you don't want to damage the posterior wall. In those situations you will use it. So this is the advantage of the hook scissor that it doesn't need the engagement principle of the contact angle of 15 degree. Now the next scissor is... Sorry. Why can we use hook scissors for gynecologists? For tubal recanalization. Suppose there is phallopering or filthy clip is applied and you want to remove that uh, part of the filthy clip, both the side you will want to trim and then take it out. In those situations you will use hook scissors. Only this is no No. Sometimes suppose you have taken the myoma out and you don't have morselator and suppose this is 3 cm myoma, then you can use hook scissors and you can trim the myoma in two half. And this is a beautiful scissor, it will cut like this. And it will engage its own. And it will cut into half and then you can take it out. Whenever you have the problem of slipping, the jaw of the scissors are not engaging, or you want control depth of cutting, hook scissors you will ask for. It's okay? Or not only that, sometimes after suture, you have done the suturing with the PDS or proline. In the proline, if you will take the proline, it pro, it PDS, it? suppose this is a, suppose this is curved scissor here. This is curved scissor only. And suppose this is this is a suture. And I will tell you to cut, cut it. It will never cut. Do you know? In open scissors, what you will do? You will hold and you will forcefully engage. You will get cut. No, you will cut. Laparoscopy, nobody can hold it for you, isn't it? So sutured, it is, it is like that, suppose, extra, extra sutured length is there. If you will hold it by one grasper, it is bad, it will detach, it will slip out, it will cut through. Because we don't have tactile feedback. So I will use the hook scissors. This is hook scissors, and then I can trim it like this, see here. As small as I want, I am trimming the suture and I can trim it because it doesn't have the problem of slipping away. 
So wherever you have the problem with the engagement, hook scissor is used to trim the sutures, to trim the mesh. Sometimes you are doing butt suspension and you are using mesh from Cooper ligament to paraurethral vaginal fascia. In those situations, mesh has to be trimmed. You can use in hernia surgery, you can use for cholangiogram, surgeons will use paloplasty, urologists will use. So where it will be used depends upon the type of tissue which you are dealing with, dimension of the structure and the uh, like if it, it is hard, soft, that way. Now the curve scissor. Curve scissor is used for the ductal structure. Like suppose you have made a window in between the cystic duct and cystic artery or uterine artery or renal artery. Like this is a window is formed, this is a window. Now advantage of the curve scissor is that you can go and you can rotate and just by rotation, the tip of the other jaw will be visible and then you can cut. Just like in open surgery also, we prefer curved curve scissors for this region only. Then after rotation, tip will be visible. And then because your telescope is from above, so both the jaw should be visible before cutting. Especially if it is blood vessel. And that's why for the tubular ductal structure or blood vessel, you will use curve scissors. Of course, you will use it after hemostasis, after either applying clip or either coagulating or after any of the knot. So you will not cut, cut the blood vessel without securing it. But once you have secured it, curve scissor is used. Curve scissor is also used for hemostasis, for unnamed vessel. Remember, in our body, any vessel which is less than one millimeter in diameter, it doesn't have name. All the vessels which is more in diameter, more than one mm, they have name. Like the appendicular, uterine, these all are more than one mm. If it is less than one mm, it will be unnamed vessel. Electrosurgery can be used safely up to the three mm vessel size. The harmonic can be used safely for the vessel diameter up to 5 mm and ligasure device can be used up to 7 mm diameter of the vessels. Electrosurgery means monopolar or bipolar can only be safely used up to the vessel of 3 mm diameter. Like you can use for appendicular vessel, you can use for the Ascending uterine, descending uterine, you can use for ovarian. <coughs> but using for uterine artery is risky. Because sometimes uterine artery is more than 3 mm. Especially if patient has a myoma <coughs> or big size uterus, then it could be 5 mm. And it is not a single artery, it is like a leech. Sometimes there may be varicose, there may be dilated loops. In those situations, using the bipolar or monopolar over the uterine is not safe unless until you have applied one clip or you have tied one knot. Harmonic you can use, you can use the Liga should also. So up to 3 mm I will use. But seizures should be used only if the diameter is less than 1 mm. That is for unnamed vessel, some people they use scissors. Suppose you have adhesion with the momentum or you have adhesion with the tube, isn't it? Or adhesion of the bladder with the abdominal wall or peritoneum. And these, these are you, you know that these are flimsy adhesions and you know that there is no any named vessel there. Means if the uterus is adhered with the abdominal wall, then there is no any named vessel there. In those situations, seizures can be used with the current. How to use? It is important that suppose this is peritoneum and it is adhered somewhere with the abdominal wall or momentum adhered. Then you go engage it. This is first is engagement. Then you press it half. And then activate the final T and then cut it. Remember, that's the importance of elastic and plastic deformation. 
if I will engage it, and then I will press the pedal, and then I will cut. This is wrong. You know it will bleed. So first I have to engage and little press. Do you know why? If you press it little bit, lumen of the vessel will come nearer to each other. And then you activate the paddle. Then there is elastin and collagen inside the tissue that will melt and it will fuse together. And then you cut. If just after engagement you will press the paddle, before sealing it will fracture. And after cutting if you will press the paddle, then also it cannot seal. So first you have to suppose this is the simple plastic and if you have to close the lumen of this tube, then I will press it first and put over the flame of the candle and then it will fuse. But if I will keep it open and then I will put over the candle, it will not get fused. It is not guaranteed. Exactly same way, you should always remember to activate the paddle of the electrosurgery if you are using scissors in between elastic and plastic deformation. First you press it little and then activate and together cut complete. Again you hold. Again you press little and take cut. Again you hold. Press little, take, cut. And then there will be hemostasis. But remember, never try to use the scissors with the current for named vessel. If you are doing what you tried not to with the scissors, invariably 100% it has to bleed. In those situations, it should be first nicely coagulated with the bipolar or like I showed, and then it has to cut in between the coagulated tissue with the scissors. But for unnamed vessel, you can use the scissors. Now the next scissors which you have is a straight scissors. This is a straight scissors. First was the hook, then the curve, then the straight. A straight scissors is used wherever you want to approximate the tissue after cutting. You should not use curve. Like suppose you want to do the cholidopolithotomy and you have to cut the CBD. If you use curves, there will be curve margins. In those situations, a straight scissors is good. You can get a straight margins. Exactly if you want to cut the serous layer of myoma, a straight scissors will be used. So that you... Again, suppose you want to do hernia surgery to cut the peritoneum. The straight scissors are good. Wherever you want. Suppose you want to do the viscovaginal fistula. Viscovaginal fistula, you have to cut the bladder in the midline and then you enter telescope into the bladder <coughs> sometime to see the posterior wall of the bladder to close the fistula by suturing. You will use the straight scissors in those situations wherever you want to have the controlled and straight margins. Like you have to suture it later, you will use this. Some scissors are micro scissors. This is micro scissors. Very a small job. Micro scissors. It is used for flimsy adhesion. Remember, whenever you want to do adhesiolysis, always blunt dissection should be preferred. <coughs> Suppose bladder is adhered with the abdominal wall due to the previous cesarean section. Or suppose omentum is there on the uterus. In all those situations, blunt dissection with the peanut should be done. You should make a pleasant, a small peanut. It is available also. This is pleasant. Can I get this a stick there? Yeah, this is pleasant. This is company is making. This is a peanut. And do you know, once you will touch the fluid, it swells. And then you can use to rub it. It is very good. Advantage of this peanut is that you will not have any fear if you will use it you will never have any fear of getting it dropped it will not be dropped and that way you don't have the fear of losing it inside the abdomen one of the biggest problem of the peanut which we are making our own 
we should be very careful not to lose it. If you will lose the, if you have lost the body tissue, like during ectopic, suppose trophoblast is lost, then it is a concern, but it is not required to do laparotomy. You should try to find it out anyway. But if you could not, then forget it. Come out, because body own tissue, it will fibrose, but it will autolyze it. In a way, stone during college tummy. Always we should try to retrieve all the lost stones. But if we could not, forget it. Only thing, you should cover it by antibiotic, so that abscess should not form. But this prenatal, if you will lose, it is a medical legal issue. It has to form the abscess, because it is front body, and not compatible with the human body, because it is cotton. So, in this prenatal, this fear is not there. So what I was talking about, that anywhere where the adhesion is there, blunt dissection is preferred, even in open surgery. Even in open surgery, if you have adhesion, you are taking a peanut and blunt dissection you are doing. Except two places. One is tube, fallopian tube, and other is bowel. In laparoscopy, anywhere if you see the bowel directly adhered, or tube is adhered, never use blunt dissection. Always the tube will perforate or bowel will puncture. You have to do sharp dissection. Sharp dissection is also known as micro dissection. It has two advantages. One advantage there will be less chances of laceration and injury to the bowel. Another advantage is suppose accidentally if it gets injured also, you can repair it because the margins will be sharp. And you can take a bite, you can suture it. And third advantage is that the re-adhesion chances will be less. If you are doing micro dissection, then the cut raw margins are fine. And there is less possibility that both will again unite to get adhered. But if you will tear it by the blood dissection bubble, then the serous layer, those injured area, again will get adhered. Next time adhesion will occur. <coughs> so sometimes there is a flimsy adhesion in the tube. Or unique tube. Unique tube means king the tube. Tube is completely kinked with the itself, its own is adhered. At one place like that it is adhered. Now this is kinked tube. You. you want to make it a straight. So you will use micro scissors. You will go and with the micro scissors slowly, 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 very carefully you will cut. And then it will become a straight. So in all those flimsy adhesion, micro scissors are used so that injury will be limited and the dissection area will be microscopic. And this is exactly fimbrioplasty. If the fimbrial end is blocked, you want to make a hole there. You should not use the big scissors, you should use micro scissors. And then you can use it. So this way, these were the four type of scissors which is generally used. The curved scissors, the straight scissors, the hook scissors and the micro scissors. Depending upon your function, <coughs> you will use it. Means UV peritoneum you can use curved scissors also in those situations and most of the time we don't cut it here just in the midline you will cut little bit and then try to tear it just try to separate it bluntly because in our idea is to separate the bladder up and separate the interior leaf of the broad ligament so that ureter will go lateral. Rather than sharp cutting, we want to separate it. But in the middle line, where the UV fold is there, one nick is required with the scissors. Even in open surgery, you are doing that. Only you are cutting in one place, and then if you with the finger, you are separating it either side. But if you want to cut peritoneum, then you should lift it a little bit. In open surgery also, because without lifting, if you are cutting, there is a danger that you can bite some of the structure behind. So you should lift it and then you can use curved scissors. Why? Because we don't need to approximate that peritoneum again. It is just separated to get the uterine before taking uterine artery. So in those situations, curved scissors is good. You don't need hook scissors. But suppose some peritoneum you are cutting which you need to approximate at the end, <coughs> like when you are doing sacrocolpopexy. In those situations, when you are cutting it the interior leaf, now after putting the mess, you have to close it. 
दो सिचुएशन स्टेट सिचुएशन भी है फुक सीजर वाई वी आर यूजिंग बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट द शार्ट मार्जिन ऑफ आइडर साइड ऑफ द ट्यूब इज एंड इट एंड इट इज बेटर इफ यू कैन कट डिस्टर्ब टू प्रॉक्सिम सो योर हुक सीजर कैन गो अप टू द लेवल ऑफ द मेजर शार्पिंग एंड इट कैन गिव यू शार्ट कट आइडर साइड तो दैट्स वाई वी यूज द हुक सीजर हुक सीजर इफ यूल यूज टू कट द यू वी फोल्ड it will be long time it will take long time because hook scissors always cut distal to proximal and it is first hooking so for peritoneum it is not good but for the tube it is good but uh, it is not must suppose you don't have hook scissors that doesn't mean that you cannot do that surgery even the curve scissors will do but curve scissors you have to be little more careful here you don't have to take care suppose i have this tube and i have this hook scissors If I am holding like that, I can see that I am not holding the entire tube. Then I will open; it will not harm. I can I can again reposition it. I can go a little. Suppose here, here this structure. Suppose suppose this structure is the fallop ring applied. This is the fallop ring here. And now this is my hook figure. I will go, and I can reposition it anywhere. And, and then, <coughs> and then I have to cut. So this way, this is the difference between the. Sorry, I cut cold little bit. So this way you have the advantage, and you can cut it anywhere. So this way you can you can decide, and the amount of the tissue, and then you can cut. This is not possible in the curve. Remember curve. If you want that much good type of the sharp, then you have to pull by one instrument, isn't it? You need to have little traction. Someone has to stretch it in front of you. Suppose it is loosely hanged, then it will not work. It will start displacing. So that's why in those situations, hook scissors are good. On on that the most cases talking about different instruments for different exercises. Is a diatomy or electro surgery three millimeters, ammonic five millimeters, or oh, oh, the eight millimeter? Did you get seven mm? Like a shell, like up to seven mm. Like a shell that is tissue response generated. Okay. Like a shell works up to seven mm. Theoretically, five mm. Up to five mm. Theoretically, theoretically, theoretically means companies are claiming. But remember. Always, it is better to use the mechanical method of the approximation, either clip or suture, or you should apply some like uh, laser welding or the glue that I will discuss in detail. Because problem is that ligand sure or harmonic. Those probes I will show you. We will see do the practical also. Those. Uh, Probes are actually single use, but the cost is one probe is costing you thirty-five thousand rupees. So generally we don't use single. We are using till it works, till it doesn't stop working. So this is the problem. That if it could not seal the uterine artery, you will ask the company people, and the first question they will ask is how many times you have used it. Now you are. Stop! You cannot say anything. Oh, this was. So what happened? The searing action and the silicone jaw cannot approximate better. And then before sealing, it cuts. So it, you should not take it granted. Ideally, theoretically, ligand sure can seal the splenic artery also, but nobody is doing this because suppose it will not seal, then what you will do? Then it's a big problem. Even you don't have time to convert. By the time you will open, patient will die because it's a huge vessel and that much thick blood. It will be full of blood abdomen. Even you don't have. So always better to use mechanical and then correct. At least one knot or one clip. Even in hysterectomy, if you will apply one knot, then both are complementing each other. Knot is complementing the energy. Energy is complementing the knot, and you will be very much assured, very much uh, like safe. How to do? We will learn. There are many type of good knots, 
always better to apply work. People are using the energy sources only because they don't have confidence in their knotting. And once you have confidence in knotting, then the energy sources are good. I am not saying that energy is not good, but energy is never promising. There are many factors. How much traction is there? How much nicely you have escultanized? So suppose you have not escultanized properly. A lot of soft tissue is surrounding. Then energy will not work. Isn't it? So there are many factors which I will discuss in detail about the dissection techniques. Yes? Um, like when we do ectopic pregnancies, do you advise we should use Levisha or not a Kairos? is one of the company that is an instrument company. Kairos is, there are many good companies. Ligasure is tissue response generator. Tissue response generator is a patented technology of Valley Lab. Valley Lab, they have patented this tissue response, that is, it can sense the burned collagen. It is talking with the tissue and as soon as the first collagen burns, it stops. So, this is a patent copyright of the Valley Lab. They have invented this technology. Gyrus is another electrosurgical company and they are also making tissue response, but they are using impedance technology. Impedance technology is used by Ethicon also in Ensil. They have one device, they have launched Ensil. So what is impedance technology? That they don't allow the temperature of the tissue to go beyond 100 degrees centigrade. And as soon as the tissue temperature is 100, that means it is sealed, it is coagulated and then it stops. So both are good, but technologically wise, technically there is a difference. So exactly same way, plasma kinetic energy works another way, then radio frequency works another way, QSA, gravitational ultrasound activity energy works other way. So there are many generation of the energy that I will discuss in detail. We have a complete two hour lecture for the energy sources. And it is very important to learn all the energy, that which energy we should use at which place. So I will discuss in detail and what are the complications or due to those energy and how to solve that, how to prevent that. So now the next instrument what I am discussing is the knot pusher. This is a very important instrument. If you see that among all those instruments, the, this is, I will give maximum importance to this instrument. This is a very simple looking instrument, just a rod, simple rod. But uh, it is a magic stick. All rod pusher is must. And uh, extra corporeal knotting, corporeal knot will be tightened outside and you will push it with the help of a knot pusher. That is extra corporeal. Other is intra corporeal. In intra corporeal, you will put the suture and needle inside and you will suture just like open surgery. So extra corporeal has the advantage that it is used for the toughest structure, vessels and the structure which has a great distance and that tissue tension. In open surgery, open surgery extra corporeal knot is uh, actually uh, open surgery is not used because Intracorporeal, when you are tying the knot, then your assistant finger is sitting over the knot. Or he is pressing. Suppose this is myomectomy you have done. That much gap is there in the myoma. Now your assistant is pressing, okay, my, just suture now, I am holding it. Anyway, he will press it and then, and by the artery forcep or by the finger, he will sit over the knot. When you have taken the first wine, he is holding, then you get second and it is locked now. Now it is no problem. Laparoscopy is not possible. So we have to play some tricks with the tissue. And those tricks is with the extra corporeal knot. So that even if the tissue is far away from each other, it can pull without slipping. And that all the advanced surgery like the myomectomy is one of the criticism in this only. That in laparoscopy you don't have good suturing and then it can rupture in the subsequent pregnancy. So open is better. But if you learn the good extracorporeal knotting, there is no limitation. 
You can use any myoma, even intramural grade 2 or bigger myomas also. So there are three types of knot pushers. <coughs> this is known as Vandarkar knot pusher. Or this is also known as closed knot pusher. This is Vandarkar. Vandarkar knot pusher, it was invented by one of the surgeon whose name was Vandarkar. Indian. Dr. Vandarkar was from the Mumbai who had invented it. This is the next instrument. This is known as clip applicator. Everybody has seen? Look at the top. Clip one is here. This is slip gun. Clip one is here. Now the next instrument which I am going to discuss to you is the clip applicator. This is clip applicator. Clip applicator is basically used for the vessel before cutting. You can use anywhere. Ovarian artery, uterine artery, splenic artery, renal artery. Clip, they are using titanium clip. There are two alloy metal that is used in laparoscopic surgery. One is titanium and other is nitinol. Nitinol was previously used by only cardiothoracic surgeon they were using during bypass surgery. But now all the clips are made up of titanium or nitinol. And staplers like endo GI linear staplers they are made up of nitinol. N-I-T-I, N-O-L, nitinol and titanium, T-I-T-A-N-I-U, titanium. So, this clip applicator is used to apply the clip. And these are the cartridge here. This is the clip. Remember, wherever you have the vessel, more than 3 mm size, up to 3 mm you can use the bipolar mono. More than that, you should always try to either apply knot or clip. Now these clips eh, are of three sides. This is green cartridge, this is yellow cartridge and one more is blue one. <coughs> blue one is not here because blue one is used up to 3 mm vessel. But why? Because it is not used much eh? because up to 3 mm we can use energy also. So I don't need it. Most commonly used are these two. This is green, this is yellow. Green is used up to the 6 mm of the tubular structure. And yellow can be used up to 8 mm. 6 mm like cystic duct or cystic artery or uterine artery, ovarian artery, appendicular artery. You can use this. This is up to 6 mm. If it is renal artery, splenic artery, then you will use this one. Or dilated cystic duct, dilated cystic duct, you will use yellow one. Now how to use? On the clip applicator, these tips are changeable. You can change it. You have to open it. And you will change the job. And I can open this. And there are different, different sizes. These are the different jobs. And I can use according to my choice. Suppose I want to use this one. I can take this and I can attack this. It is changed. Remember, if you are using it, before putting it inside the abdomen or before using it, you should must make it tighter. Because suppose your nurse doesn't like you, so you will just make two, three times lose this one. And now what will happen? I will show you. See, I am closing but it is not closing full. Can you see that? So you will apply the structure and like this is the cartridge. You should hold it by the shaft. Not by hair. You should hold it. If you will hold by hair, what will happen? Clip will drop. So you should hold by shaft. And then press it here. It is loaded. Can you see that? And once it is loaded, then this is 
Can you hold it? And this is a tubular structure. And here you will go and clip it. Clip. Yes. Very good. He has clipped. Open it. But it, it could not. Because it was loose. It was not closing. So never forget to check it before using. And now make it tight. And now see. It is fully closing. Isn't it? So check it. And now you do it. Now it is loaded. And now he will take it. This is the tubular structure. We will go and engage it. Press. See now how nicely dumbbell is formed. This is called a dumbbell. Dumbbell means constriction in between and swelling either side. And now it will never slip. It is holding so tight. You cannot pull it. Pull it. It will not. Pull. You cannot pull it. It is so tight because of dumbbell formation. So clip should be applied properly and after clipping keep it pressed for 3 seconds. Don't open immediately. 3 seconds. 1, 2, 3 and then open. Again the reason is that tissue should get plastic deformation. After applying immediately if you open sometimes it becomes loose. So tissue should get plastic deformation. Now Clips are very good, but uh, it has some complication also, especially for surgeons. When you are doing cholecystectomy, sometimes clips create cationstone. What is cationstone? Cationstone is that sometimes, suppose you have a very thick cystic duct and you don't know knotting and suturing. Now what the surgeons they do, they apply the clip in a step ladder fashion. They apply one clip and then they cut. Then they apply another. And then again they cut. And then they apply third. And then they finally cut. So basically, like this is finger, one, two and three. Means in a step. Is it three one step, two step, three step. Step, step like. But it has big problem. The clip which was in the middle, in due course of time it will get internalized. And once it is internalized into the lumen, it will act as a needles for the stone formation. And then Professor Bursi, he has found first that there was a stone into the CBD and by in curiosity once he cut the stone it was glistening like a pupil of the cat in the dark. If you see the cat eye in the dark there is a yellow slit like pupil there. Pupil is very furious, it is looking fearful, it is yellow. Exactly the same way he saw this cat eye. And he has given this name cationstone. It is also known as cystic duct clipper stone. And this is a late complication of the using the clip in the cystic duct. So you should not do that. Ideally, clip should must project both the side little. Little this side, little that side clip is projecting. If the clip is a small for the structure, you should never try to excuse it anyhow. Because if the size of the clip, clip is a smaller for the tissue, then it will get internalized. Titanium clip should never be used for tube ligation. If you don't have fallop ring or fissy clip or hulka clip, you do the destruct destructive tube ligation. Destructive method of sterilization. You apply cautery, bipolar and cut in between. Clip if you will apply, it get internalized into the lumen. There is more chances of ectopic also. And failure again from the top it will get recanalized. Because it is metal. So these are the few things which should be used for the clip in the mind. Now, one simple question. Suppose you have to apply, how many clips are applied? 
Three should be applied. Two towards the remaining vessel and one towards the sacrificed area. Suppose you are applying on the cystic duct, two towards the CVD and one towards the gallbladder. And you will cut between the second and third. Exactly suppose you want to apply over ovarian artery or uterine artery or anywhere, then two towards the remaining side and one towards the uterine, uterus. And then you will cut between second and third. You will apply two, it has advantage that you are double secure. That it will not bleed. Now if you are applying two, then the question is what should be the distance between the first and second? Suppose this is the two clip I am applying, then what should be the distance between first and second? Okay. Okay, can you can you apply one more? One one is one answer is one to two mm. Other answer is depending upon the amount of tissue which I have. Yes, yes. Actually, the distance between first and second clip should be three mm, and distance between second and third clip should be six mm. Uh, there is that I am coming to the point. Now question is why? What is the logic behind? Why it should be not more than 3 mm? As he said, if I have a longer structure, I can keep a distance 1 cm, 1 cm and 1 cm. And then I can cut between second and third. There is a problem. If you will give a big distance between first and second clip, then second clip will dislodge and you will migrate into the abdomen. Remember, our body has a capacity only to fibrose the necrose tissue up to 5 mm. Suppose I will tie a knot here on my finger, this finger will get necrose, and then it will slough out, it will drop down. Isn't it? But it will reject it out. It will amputate it. But if I will tie at the tip here, 5 mm, it will not get amputated it will start shrinking and it will be pulled in, it will get mummified and fibrosed. If the distance between two clips is 3 mm, both will fibrose together. It will cover by fibrous tissue. If you make a big distance between first and second, there is ischemic zone in between first and second. And that much big necrosis tissue, the fibrosis will not have, it will drop down. 99% of the time, nothing will happen. Even if it is passed down, body has the great capacity of self-healing. Momentum will come or fibrous tissue will cover, arrest it. It will not harm. But there are few cases reported where it was complication. There was one report that one surgeon was performing hernia surgery and he was having bleeding, he applied two, three clips there. And after few days, patient came with the clips in the scrotum, palpating there, painful. It migrates to the defect, to the canal, because in laparoscopy, we don't do herniography. We don't close the defect. We just reinforce the entire myopectineal orifice with a mess. So why, when he has pulled all the sac out, few of the clips they could migrate into the, the scrotum, so the defect. And then he has to later he has to call to give the incision and take it all out under C out. You have to see it. Exactly same way, one of the young women, she undergone laparoscopic cholecystectomy and after one year she had a severe back pain. She was working in circus. She was athlete. And once the MRI was performed, then the clip has migrated, it was pressing one of the nerves there. And in those situations, you will have the big problem and then it was operated to remove it. 
So ideally, we should not allow our clip to move into the abdominal cavity from here there. Even if it is not harming, suppose the clip you are surgeon and you have done the cholecystectomy and your clips are migrating into the pelvis, it was found over the uterus or anterior posterior caldi sac and one gynecologist in the X-ray or ultrasound she will see, then it will not give you a good name. She will say that what this police surgeon has performed surgery here and his clip is there in the uterus. So we should, you give 3 millimeter, it should not be more than that. Now question is why not it is less? Remember, if you don't have the space there, if you apply one clip over the another, both will be loose, both will come up. Clips are in the position due to dumbbell formation. What is dumbbell? <coughs> Constriction in between and swelling either side. If another is here, it will remove the dumbbell of the first one and both is loose. So if you don't have the place there, be satisfied with the one clip only. Suppose there was a bleeding, you applied a clip and bleeding has stopped. Don't disturb it. Leave it, forget it. If you are thinking that, okay, I should do a little more help to the patient, get one more and applying one over another, first also will come. <coughs> if you apply one over another, first will also get dislodged. So distance should never be less than 3 mm. If there is no distance, no tissue, then one is good enough. Second should not be applied because second will make the first also lose. So these are the few points for the clip should be kept in mind. Now the next instrument which I am going to discuss to you is uh, lunch time, prayer time. So I will just stop and just after lunch we will again start. Yes. Yeah.